I think it was 2003 when Rio de Janeiro got its first official Pokemon tournament. Sao Paulo, the biggest city in Brazil, had already had tournaments for, I think, a year or two, but that was the first time that there was one happening in my city. I think it was right on the edge of Generations 2 and 3. If I remember correctly, that was the last Gen 2 tournament, but there were already people there with Ruby and Sapphire. And I wish I could remember more details about the event, but both my memory and the internet have failed me. Se algum brasileiro assistindo lembra do evento, me avisa. Eu acho que foi parte da Liga Oficial Pokémon Evolution, organizado pela revista Pokémon Evolution, mas é só isso que eu lembro do evento. Anyway, I was really excited for my first ever opportunity to compete IRL. I had lots of practice in Pokemon Stadium 2, thank you Earl's Academy. I built a team of six just for that tournament, and I was confident that I could do well. My dad drove me to the anime convention that the tournament was going to happen at, and when he dropped me off, because the rest of my family was going to join me at the con later, my dad asked me if I thought I would be one of the oldest kids at the tournament. I would have been around 13 or 14 at the time, and I was one of the youngest. Anyway, I registered for the competition, I got matched up with a guy whose in-game name was Thunder, and he swiftly swept my team with a Mewtwo. It was a single elimination tournament, so that was it for me. Thunder did go on to become the champion, though. I know that Mewtwo was the strongest Pokémon at the time, and I probably would have lost even if he wasn't champion material, but I like to tell myself that I would have done a little better if I'd been matched up with anyone else. That was the first and the last tournament that I prepared for until International Challenge February that happened just a couple weeks ago. I hadn't participated in any competitions this whole time except for some online competitions in Generation 7 that I joined just to get the participation rewards like some Mega Stones or a Shiny Mimikyu. But I didn't really prepare a team for those competitions. I did prepare some individual Pokemon like my Shiny Mega Gardevoir or a Scrappy Boom Burst Swellow but I wasn't building a team, I just wanted to try some sets that I thought looked interesting, and I only really did between 3 and maybe 10 battles for each of those competitions. Part of the reason I wasn't that into competitive Pokémon was the effort. Not just choosing a team and coming up with their movesets and items, which is actually something I've always enjoyed doing, but just the effort of finding Pokémon with their hidden abilities, or training for Eevees, or the really big one was always breeding for Ivies. I just wasn't interested enough to put in all of that effort. The other big reason that I wasn't that into competitive Pokémon was this notion that I think a lot of people have that you can't really do well with your favorites, that there's a small number of centralizing Pokémon that you have to use, and a lot of times those are legendaries. I, like I think a lot of other people, do have a bias against legendary Pokémon. Pokémon that, from what the game tells us, feels like they should be unobtainable. I think the last time I used a legendary Pokémon as part of my team was Generation 3. And since I'm not really willing to use legendary Pokémon for competitions, there was never really any chance that I would do well. But Sword and Shield changed most of that. It is still a bit of a drag to take your in-game team and prepare it for competitive use, but building a new team is relatively simple. There's many fast and easy ways to max out your Eevees, you never really have to worry about natures thanks to mints, and even Ivies are easy to max out with bottle caps. So the only impediments are those hidden abilities and Ivies if you want anything other than 31. And the other big thing is that none of the legendary Pokémon that are in Sword and Shield have been allowed for ranked battles or online competitions. So you do still have some centralizing Pokémon, but at least they're not legendary. And that's why I decided to give VGC-style competitions a try this year. I still found it a bit overwhelming, though, to try to create a team from scratch. I haven't kept up with the competitive scene, except for watching VGC International Finals on YouTube, so I'm not really familiar with common strategies, or how specific Pokémon are used, or what moves they learn. But then I had an idea to help me out a little. You remember some time ago I talked about building a team of my favorite Pokémon? It was for a playthrough, and I had a spreadsheet for that. I decided to use that spreadsheet to help me build my competitive team. So I updated the spreadsheet with Galar Pokémon, and since not every Pokémon is in Sword and Shield, I added a column so you can check on or off if a Pokémon is eligible by whatever criteria you want to use. I revised my list of favorites for each type, I checked off which ones were actually in the game, and I decided I would only allow myself to use the top two Pokémon of each type that are in Sword and Shield. This was the list that I came up with. 
Not everything on it is viable, but I was happy with it. And from this list, I decided to focus on newer Pokémon or Pokémon that I hadn't used very much before. And so, with help from my friends Charon, Ethan, and Prima Diva, who are all much more into competitive Pokémon than me, this is the team that I came up with. Prankster Whimsicott with Tailwind, Barrascuta for its raw destructive speed and power, Toxtricity with powerful special spread moves, Obstagoon with Guts and Flame Orb, and then a mix attacking Aegislash and a huge power Steelix for when I don't have Tailwind. I could have taken a few days to practice with this team in ranked battles, but I kind of wanted my international challenge experience to sort of mimic that first competition that I went to, when I had lots of experience against Stadium 2 teams, but not against real people. So instead I went to the Battle Tower, and it turns out Battle Tower is actually pretty easy. Almost nobody even Dynamaxes in there, so it wasn't great practice, but I do still think that it had its value. Anyway, International Challenge begins, and on my first day of battling I did 10 battles. I won 5, I lost 5. It's pretty standard for me. I had some trouble with Tyranitar teams, with Max Rockfall taking out my Whimsicott in one turn, and I didn't really get to use Steelix, although there were some battles that I thought it would have done well in if I'd brought it in. The next day I got another 10 battles in, but things did not start well. My first 5 battles were 5 consecutive losses. But I did mostly recover and I ended with 4 wins and 6 losses for the day. The big challenge was Trick Room teams. Whimsicott has taunts to try to prevent Trick Room, and I did have that work once or twice, but on this day I faced a lot of teams that had an answer to that, with Psychic Surge, or Fake Out, or Mental Herb. And my team really did not perform well under Trick Room. Even Steelix wasn't able to do much. And those Dynamax Weakness Policy Rhyperiors really wrecked my team, coming in when Trick Room is already set up and I basically have no chance of outspeeding them. But things really turned around on the last day. I managed to fit in 17 battles, and I won 12 of them, for an overall record of 21 wins to 16 losses. I did get a bit lucky here though, because most of my battles were right at the end of the competition period, when most serious battlers would have gone their 45 battle quota over already. I faced a few teams that were clearly only in it for the ball guy shirt, including one that had 4 unevolved Pokemon, but it was a good boost for my ego and I can't complain. I ended the competition with a rank of 1605 in about 3300th place. And I actually really enjoyed it. The teams were really varied and the battles were a lot of fun. I don't see myself becoming committed to VGC or going to in-person tournaments, but I have taken my team into ranked battles and I plan on participating in other competitions including International Challenge April. I do need to make some adjustments to my team though. I think my Aegislash would have done better with a steel move and an all physical set. It definitely missed having steel moves, and if I fully invest into physical attack I'll also be able to get more power out of Sacred Sword and Shadow Sneak. I also really need to find a way to deal with Trick Room. I originally planned to have Whimsicott with Trick Room so that I could unset it, but then I swapped it out for Taunt. And Taunt has been great, but maybe I'll switch Energy Ball for Trick Room? I don't know. But I do need to have a way to regain the speed advantage after the Trick Room setter is out of the picture. And the really big one is that I need a replacement for Steelix. Steelix is not pulling its absolutely massive weight, and so I've basically been running a team of 5 Pokémon. I will stick to my rule of top 2 Pokémon of each type though, just adjusting for the eligibility of different Pokémon. International Challenge April is still Galar Dex only, but Ranked now allows all Pokémon that are in Sword and Shield besides Legendaries, so my options there might be a little bit different. Anyway, that is my VGC story for now. I would love to hear yours and what you like and don't like about competitive Pokémon. And if you'd be interested in seeing some VGC style content from me, let me know. Maybe I'll stream International Challenge April or something. Before you go, make sure you rock smash that like button and maybe subscribe if you're new here. Thank you to my patrons, especially luxury patron Ethan Saffron. If you'd like to join them in supporting this channel, check out the link in the description. I'm Umbreon Libris, I'll see you in the next chapter. For an overall record of 21 lib 21 lins to 16 wasses. <laughs>